What is up my brothers and sisters? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys who are new, I'm Andrew and welcome to Persistence in Prayer guys. And today I'm just super excited honestly to come on here and make this video because this is something that I really struggled with in the beginning of my walk and a question I always used to have. And this is also a question that a lot of people have been asking me recently. And before I begin, I just want to let you guys know that everything I say on this video, always take it up with the Lord. You know, don't just listen to me, test everything I say and take it up with the Lord at the end of the day and ask him to show you, you know, the things that are in your life that, you know, are not pleasing to him. But I remember guys, when I first came to Christ, one thing I really struggled with was my friends. The friends that I had when I first came to Christ in the beginning of 2020, they were friends that I knew in the world. When I came to Christ, I started to notice that the things that they started to do were really, really uncomfortable. And guys, these were friends that I had who I knew since, you know, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. Like these are friends that I had who I knew for a really, really long time. And I remember when after I would talk to them, I would feel this really deep conviction by the Holy Spirit. I'd feel this um this feeling that it wasn't right, you know, being around them. And I remember the Lord would, he would tell me like, these are not the people that I want you to have in your life. And I would really wrestle with him. I would go be trying to go back and forth, you know, trying to justify, you know, oh, maybe I can help them out and stuff like that. And I truly feel that even as I'm making this video, I feel that there's someone who's watching this, who is in a friendship, who they feel that the Lord has been convicting with them about it. And my advice to you would be, you gotta be selfish with your soul. You got to understand that like the people around you, the, the friends that you have, you know, they're either going to be bringing you up or they're going to be tearing you down. And that's why it's super important that you ask the Lord who he wants you to be friends with, because on that day, when you stand before God, your friends aren't going to be with you. It's going to be you and God. So I want to read a scripture from second Corinthians chapter six, and I'm just going to just pull it up on my phone. So it says, do not be unequally bound together with unbelievers. Do not make mismatched alliances with them inconsistent with your faith. For what partnership can righteousness have with lawlessness? So basically what Paul is saying right now, he's saying that do not be unequally bound. What fellowship can someone walking, someone who's walking after God, what fellowship can they truly have with someone who's not walking after God, right? Because Jesus said anyone who is not for him is actually against them. And then it says, or what fellowship can light have with darkness? As Christians, guys, we are children of light. We are children of the light. And anyone who is not following Christ, because either you are a child of God or you are a child of the devil. Verse 15, what harmony can there be between Christ and Satan? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? See, as believers, we are not the same we use, person we used to be. We are a new creation in Christ. And I'm not saying that you can't necessarily associate or talk to unbelievers. That's not what I'm saying because at the end of the day, unbelievers need to hear the gospel, right? But as a Christian, as a follower of Christ, the main people that you should be around is Christians. You should be around people who are wanting to encourage you to read your word, people who are talking about God with you, people who are wanting to pray with you. Because at the end of the day, whenever you are with an unbeliever, and I believe it's Pastor Philip who says this, whenever you are with an unbeliever, guys, there's always going to be a fight for influence. Either you're going to pull them into the light or they're going to pull you into the dark. And it's important that you remove yourself from anyone who is either causing you to stumble or anyone who is not benefiting your walk with Christ. Because even if you look at Jesus, for example, he ate with the sinners and he ate with the tax collectors, right? But those weren't the main people he was truly around. He was around his disciples. He was around his, his friends, right? The disciples, they were, they were his friends. So he was mainly around them, but he would associate with unbelievers, you know, sharing truth, sharing the gospel. I used to just think all the time, oh, how is this person going to come to Christ if I'm not their friend anymore. I, you know, I would kind of guys try to justify, be like, oh no, I need to be their friend so that they can hear about Christ so I can be a light of Christ to them. And don't get me wrong, sometimes the Lord will have people in our life so that we can plant seeds. But our job at the end of the day is not to save anyone. That's not our job. Our job is to tell them the gospel, tell them the mission of Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit is the actual one who he's the only one who can pull people to the Father. And if you are around people who are giving you who make you want to sin. If you're around people who are listening to worldly music, if you're around people who, you know, even if you're not necessarily in sin with them, you just being around them, you just associating them is just going to try to make your flesh want to do the things that they're doing. In 1 Peter chapter 4, 4, it says, in connection with all this, 
They, the unbelievers, are resentful and surprised that you do not think like them and value their values. So right now, Peter is saying that the unbelievers, now that you're saved, they're going to be surprised that you're not the same person. They're going to be surprised that you're not doing the same things that you used to do. And it says run hand in hand with them into the same excess of dispassion and a moral freedom. And they criticize and abuse and ridicule you and make fun of your values. So as a follower of Christ, the most important thing is Jesus, right? And I want to take this even one step further, even in relationships. If you are in a relationship or if you are thinking about getting into a relationship, I recommend that you are equally yoked with this person. I've seen so many examples of, you know, a relationship where someone's a strong believer and someone's not really a believer and it falls apart because they're not equally yoked. And with our decisions, you know, when we make Jesus our Lord and Savior, you know, Lord means that he's master. He's He's Lord over all our life. He decides who our friends are. He decides how our day goes. He decides what we do. You know, Jesus is sovereign over our lives. So I would just say, you know, if you feel that you have a friendship that God's been convicting you about, if you feel that you're in a relationship that is not of the Lord or that you're feeling a deep conviction by the Holy Spirit, I would say pray on it. Ask the Lord. Ask him to remove the people from your life that are not of him. But you have to be ready to obey because I remember when I did this, I asked the Lord. I was like, Lord, all the people that are in my life that are not of you, Lord, I want them out. <laughs> Lord, I want them all gone. And, you know, he would convict me about it. He would tell me this person, this person, this person, take them out of your life. And I want to read a verse from Matthew 19, 29 that just really encouraged me because when I first came to Christ, after I let them all go, you know, I didn't have that many friends. I only had like one or two Christian friends and it was just really just me and the Lord. But at the end of the day, I had the greatest friend of all, Jesus. And he really truly is enough. You don't need to feel that you need the friends or a certain relationship to, to validate who you are. Like Jesus is truly enough. You are complete in Christ. And Matthew 19, 29 says, and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or farms for my name's sake will receive many times as much and will inherit eternal life. So Jesus said, anyone who's given up a mother or brother or sister for my name's sake will receive many times as much and will inherit eternal life. Also, guys, if you guys are looking for a fellowship because it's not easy to do this walk alone. If you think about it, Jesus, he was never alone. He was with his disciples most of the time. And God said, it's not good for man to be alone. We can't do this walk by ourselves because there's going to be times where you're going to go through seasons and you're going to have to lean on people. You know, we're always going to want to lean on Jesus, but he has given us brothers and sisters. He has given us a community to help us in our times of of need and distress. Think of the book of Acts, right? When the first church first started, there weren't too many of them, right? There were just a hundred something of them in the upper room, but they were together. They were in community. They were eating. They were praying. They were preaching the gospel together. And as a result of that, many people were added to the kingdom of God. So if you are looking for a fellowship, if you're looking for a prayer group, if you're looking for a Bible study, please let me know because I can get you plugged and connected just to different groups and stuff like that, because I really do care about your walks. I really genuinely care about all of you guys. So to answer the question, if a Christian should be friends with a non-believer, I would say that you can associate with them from time to time if there's a purpose behind it, or if you want to share truth with them or just check up on them maybe from time to time. But I would not recommend being best friends or close, close or buddy, buddy with a non-believer. And you're special to God. You have a purpose and he wants you around people who are going to build you up. So I truly hope this video helped you guys out. Also too, if you have a prayer request, please let me know. Leave it down in the link below. And that's all for this video. I love you guys. Be blessed guys in Jesus mighty name.